to the Gaza Strip. Activist Rami Aman joining us from there. Uh, Rami, this really seems to be a moment, a very delicate fine line between calm and conflict. What have the last 24 hours looked like for you there in Gaza? What have you observed? Uh, hi all. The last 24 hours now, including uh, discussions between the factions here, Islam Jihad and Hamas and other Palestinian parties and uh, the Palestinian audience here in Gaza Strip now following up the uh, Abu Mazen declaration and what is going to be happen through Ramallah, through the meetings of uh, the National Center in Ramallah. Is there a sense uh, that Islamic Jihad uh, is indeed behind this as they claim that there is a sort of tension between Islamic Jihad and Hamas? Is that something you're able to observe? I think there is some tension between the members or all the followers, the followers of Hamas and followers of Islamic Jihad in, uh, in the ground during Gaza Strip. Uh, because the, the followers of Hamas said that it's not good time for the Islamic Jihad to firing rockets against Israel, especially that we are under a truce discussions or meetings with the Egyptian delegation. But uh, the Islamic Jihad leaders uh, and the Hamas leaders already there are uh, some coordinating between them and uh, for sure the Islamic Jihad uh, has many things to send not just for Israel, but maybe for the whole world that we are here in Gaza Strip. We are also a power in Gaza Strip, Hamas not alone here. And also it's a message for the Egyptians that you should also uh, talk with us, you should also listen to us, and also for the Israelis that Hamas not controlling Gaza Strip, but also Islamic Jihad controlling the situation in Gaza. Right, there are several obstacles standing in the way, it seems, of that potential truce between Israel and Hamas. Uh, Rami, we spoke earlier uh, in this broadcast about fuel. Israel started allowing fuel shipments back into the Gaza Strip, funded by Qatar last week after a period of calm. Uh, how, what kind of difference did you see in the Gaza Strip in terms of power, electricity supply when that happened? And are you concerned that that's going to come to an end now? Uh, for sure, now you can mention the difference in the strip here. The electricity now, it's full day sometimes, or maybe just cut for two or three hours. Since two or three days ago, the electricity cut for all the day. But nowadays, the people now uh, feeling good after the Qatari power entered to Gaza Strip. And for sure, Hamas and the uh, Hamas government here in Gaza are happy uh, because now the people are not suffering and the people now. Uh, not suffering because of the electricity crisis. And it's a message also mentioned that uh, Abu Mazen cut the electricity and Abu Mazen responsible for the uh, electricity crisis. But since a year ago, before, before Abu Mazen cut the money for the electricity, it, it just came, you know, eight hours electricity and eight hours no electricity. But now, there are more extra hours for the electricity. Maybe Hamas and Qatar want the people to feel more comfortable against uh, the situation and also let all the efforts against the borders or towards the borders. The people here or the governments here want to prompt the people to support the demonstration, to support the protest, to support the Egyptians and the, the Palestinian efforts uh, to achieve the truth, but I think Abu Mazen maybe have something to say, and uh, also the Egyptians also need something to say in the end. For right. sure, the situation was still not sustainable, but the people here, some few feelings inside them that we are now not suffering from the electricity crisis. All right, several different elements in what is already extremely volatile status quo.